Hello, 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 hello. Hello, hello, hello. I say hello for a little while because every time I go live on YouTube, it always cuts the very beginning of the live video off. So, hello. Hi, if you're watching live. Hello, if you're watching the replay, which is most of you because I am based in the UK and a lot of you are not. So, uh, if you haven't seen me before, if this is the first time watching, my name is Connie. My business is called Faf Designs and I should be live on the Dixie Bell YouTube channel. Um, I come live here every Wednesday. No, it's Tuesday. Let's get the day of the week right. I'm live here every Tuesday at two o'clock. Um, good morning, Dennis. Hi, Anne-Marie. Happy New Year to everybody. I have just raced back from the hairdressers. I've had um, just a little trim, um, but it is absolutely throwing it down today the weather is disgusting so i'm hoping the lighting is okay um hi sandy hello um so i'm my, I, I am obviously live on the dixie bell youtube channel obviously because you're watching me um if you're watching the replay hello uh make sure you pop hashtag replay um <clears throat> hi jackie where you been where you been um so I, like I say, I'm live here every week. Last week, I did Back to Basics with White Lightning. And on the comments that I was reading when I went back and looked at the comments afterwards, everybody said how useful it was to kind of go back to basics with stuff. And what you forget is, now I've been a brand ambassador for two years. I have also done, um, I've been a content creator for Dixie Belt before that. And because I've been using the products for so long, I forget. I forget sometimes. Oh, you were, you were in South Africa, weren't you? And did you have a nice time? Was it amazing? Was the weather lovely? Are you liking being back in the UK? Um, so I forget. Every, every week, every day, I gain new followers on my platforms. If you don't follow me, make sure you follow me little shameless plug there for my own uh social media channels um but what i also forget is the dixie bell youtube channel is growing at an astounding rate an astounding rate so there are new people that are following us time that don't know who i am which is fair enough because i'm just a little old me um this weather is just rude and nasty. The UK weather at the minute is disgusting. Um, so they have no idea who I am. They may have seen a little clip on uh, the Dixieville YouTube channel and now they're subscribed and they're thinking, who is this strange person that's always covered in paint, looking a bit rough? So I am one of Dixieville's brand ambassadors and every week I'm live here. You can find an absolute huge array of knowledge on the Dixie Bell YouTube channel. Scroll away to your heart's content and I'm pretty sure you'll find something that's useful because I still watch old videos on here as well because we're all learning. We're all learning all the time. That sounds cheesy, but it's true. So because I went back to basics, because it was so helpful and because I am aware that the Dixie Bell YouTube channel has exploded a little bit over the last few months, I'm just going to go back to basics with a few products. Not I've not every product in the line, just going to go back to basics with a few. Um, so apologies if you are not new here or if you are um, familiar with everything that I'm saying. Um, hopefully you'll just come along for the ride. I am going to sneeze. This is never... <coughs> that's never... <coughs> double sneeze. That's never happened on a live. And I've been doing them for a few years now. So there's a first time for everything, isn't there? Um, I'm just glad I was able to duck off camera because people's sneeze faces are not that nice, are they? Let's be honest. And mine is particularly, particularly horrendous. So <laughs> moving swiftly on. The piece that I've got behind is finished, almost. So last week I addressed prep and things that you do at the very start of your project to clean it. This week, I'm going to talk about what I do right at the very end and what you can do right at the very end to kind of finish off your project. And the thing that I'm going to talk about today, if you haven't guessed from the title, because the title kind of gives it away, um, is Big Mama's Butter. Now, this is one of my absolute top 
easily five Dixie Bell products. It's one of my favourite things that Dixie Bell do. Um, I always have a tin. It's phenomenal. I am a very big fan of Orange Grove. So that's the scent that it comes in. So I'll tell you a little bit about it and then I'll tell you what I use it for mainly. It can actually be used. It's a multi-purpose product. I have got a 10 ounce tin, which is this, but it also comes in a four ounce tin. Obviously it depends how much you paint, depends how much you use. I always use um, loads of this product. So I get a bigger tin because it's better value for money. But if you don't paint a lot, you can buy it in a smaller tin. This isn't Big Mama's Butter. This is actually Best Ang Wax, but the size of the tin is the same. So I'm just telling you that you can get it in both. It comes in four scents. So you can get it unscented and you can add your own essential oils to it to make it scented. So if you particularly like lavender, you can do that. Um, Happy New Year, Sue. Um, so the unscented one, if you are particularly um, not great with smells, the unscented one is fabulous. It also has three other scents that you can have. Orange Grove, Flannel and Suzanne's Garden. Um, Orange Grove, I'm a diehard fan of Orange Grove. I love citrusy scents. I'm not so much of a fan of florally scents. The flannel one is very nice if you like the smell of um, handsome men. That's all I can tell you it smells like. It smells lovely. It's very, um, very manly. It's, it's very nice. But my absolute favourite is Orange Grove and that's the one that I've got here. So, what is Big Mama's Butter? It is a very soft, buttery wax. Now, my workshop's cold because I haven't been in it all day today. Normally, I'll have heated my workshop and I've got the heating on. So this has gone a little bit harder than what it normally is. But you can see how soft the product is. It's a really, really soft, buttery wax. And like I say, it's a multi multi purpose product. So you can use this to seal chalk mineral paint to add it over the top as a protective layer if you want. It's not it doesn't offer as much protection as a clear coat or gator hide, but it will offer some protection. You can also use this on raw wood to nourish the wood and bring out the wood grain. You can mix this with another oil based product. For example, I've done a video recently of mixing this with no paint gel stain and that gives you like a tinted wax. So you can mix it and you can do all the things. So it's actually all natural and eco-friendly, which is lovely. And the ingredients, I can never remember all of the ingredients. I always forget one. So I've, I've written them down on a little piece of paper here. Um, it's got hemp seed oil. It's got coconut oil. It's got beeswax and it's got car, car, no, carnab, carnaba wax. I can never say that word. Um, orange is your favourite too. <laughs> yeah, I don't share my Big Mama's butter either. I wish you could smell it. For those of you that have never smelt it, honestly, Orange Grove is just divine. So it's got all those really gorgeous, eco-friendly ingredients. And for that reason, it makes it perfect for kind of finishing off your project. So this is what I use it probably the most for. I use it for most things. Where I can use it, I will definitely use it. But this is where I use it the most. So behind me, I have got a customer's commission. This has been painted in silk all in one mineral paint in the colour Deep Sea, which is this really beautiful dark navy. So this has been finished. I've also photographed this and sent um, sent a picture to the customer just to make sure that they like it, um, which is something that I often do just before it's finished. And she does. So what I'm going to do now is just finish it off. So what, what I had to do on this lip was sand it all off because there was some old varnish on here that had gone a little bit flaky and chipped so i just decided to sand all that varnish off so what i usually do and this is obviously a blanket box um <clears throat> but you can do this on the inside of drawers on the inside of cabinets it basically on the interior of anything um is where you can use this does it not make it oily so it is oily but also 
it you take the excess off so I'm going to show you in a sec um I always use a brush with Big Mama's Butter because I just find it easier to apply and I always allocate a brush specifically to this product so this is the Lapetit brush and it's got a tapered end so it's got a point and it's a natural bristle brush because natural bristles traditionally hold waxy product better than a synthetic brush that tends to just clog the bristles up this this kind of natural bristles hold on to the wax a little bit better and um sort of disperse it onto the surface a little bit better so i just add a little bit onto the brush and i'm just going to put it on here where you can where you can see it and it really revives the wood so the wood obviously originally was looking a little bit kind of dried out um because obviously i'd sanded that original finish off which was it was quite a dark varnish but like i say it was all like kind of chipped away and you can see the difference so that's untreated and that's treated with big mama's butter so it not only brings the wood grain out and visibly visibly looks a lot better it actually the ingredients in it nourish the wood so it doesn't sort of leave it dried out um and then all you do is grab a lint-free cloth a rag or i use this shop cloth stuff because it's quite strong it's a bit like kitchen roll um in the fact that it's disposable but it's a lot more heavy duty so it doesn't rip and it also doesn't shed on your project and you can leave this for basically however long you want so the wood will only absorb what is actually needed by the wood you can't really go wrong with this product so if you left this on here for a day it wouldn't hurt it is what i'm saying is it wouldn't sort of it wouldn't make it any it wouldn't have a detrimental effect and then all you need to do is just rub the excess off <clears throat> and then you should have a little bit of product left on your cloth now obviously because it's going on to raw wood it's just probably picking up a little bit of the the dust on the raw wood or maybe some of the tannins out of the wood and <clears throat> there you go so that's that's completely untreated and this is obviously buffed in i do generally tend to leave it about 20 minutes just so that it's soaked in but i'm just speeding it up for the purpose of the video so that feels super smooth it gives you a nice little shine and i also do the same to the interior of the blanket box so like i say you can do this to draw interiors you can do this to cupboard interiors um pretty much anything where you're not going to paint you can do this to let me just move you up a little bit oh no are you okay dropped you you came out of your holder tripod issues i'm i'm back here we go so you can do you can use this product on unpainted and painted surfaces so it's super versatile it like i say it just soaks in as much as is required so you, you can't get it wrong you can't put too much on you can't really put too little on if you put too little on it might go a bit patchy and you might need to reapply a second coat but you can't really get the product wrong and if you are selling your pieces or thinking you might sell your piece it's a really nice way of finishing your piece off and just giving it that little bit of extra detail. Because um, I think it was Jackie that just put, if you've got um, like an edge that something else is sitting on, so this lid is going to close down. Um, I missed that question about how to do hemp oil. Um, ideally, you don't want two painted surfaces to be touching because it'll it'll try it'll just won't. This not a good idea. Um, so if I had painted this lip, the paint probably would have pulled after continued use. Whereas it's going on to a nice smooth waxed finish surface, then it's not gonna it's not gonna sort of do anything to the lid of this, which is painted. Um, you can, like I say, you can use it over the top of chalk mineral paint. 
You can also use it over the top of silk mineral paint if you wanted to give a little bit more of a shine and a luster to the paintwork. You can add it over the top of silk. And the key is to buff it. So if you don't remove the excess, if you don't buff it, if you just left it on the surface, say for example, if I just wanted to add a little bit of a shine to this paintwork, which is silk, I'd apply it all over. And then if I left it, what would happen is it goes sticky after a while. So you've got to remember to buff the excess off. And that's whether it's going over painted or unpainted, you need to take the excess off. It's a little bit like when you're applying wax to seal. If you don't buff the excess off, it's just going to feel tacky and it's not going to dry and it just goes a little bit sticky. So you need to remember to move, take the excess off. That's my dogs barking at the door. Um, so I've sneezed on this live twice did a double sneeze and now my dogs are going crazy it's a good job i shut these double doors to keep the most of the noise out um if you've got a question about how to do hemp oil can you retype it because it only stays on the screen for so long and i don't know how to get the comments back if not shoot me a message on facebook or instagram if you want and i'll try and answer it um that way but i just i caught the first bit of where it said how do you do hemp oil and then i missed i missed the rest um I don't know what the dogs are barking at. Probably a delivery. So, <clears throat> what else is there to tell you about this? Oh, it neutralises odours. Um, what would you recommend over raw wood on a dining room table? Um, so, dining room tables, I don't treat the same way as something that's more decorative like this. Obviously, well, I'm hoping nobody's going to be eating their dinner off of this blanket box. If they were, it might be a little bit odd. Um, oh, I use how to do hemp oil with the inside of drawers. Yes, you can add you can add Big Mama's butter over how to do hemp oil. Yes, you can. So one of the ingredients of Big Mama's butter is hemp seed oil. So and they're both oil based, so you're fine to use them together if you want to. Um, so back to the dining table. I hope no one's going to be eating the dinner off this blanket box. If that was the case, it might be a little bit strange. However, dining tables, if you're anything like my family and my kids, then you need to add a protective top coat over them. And personally, like I say, because I know my kids and my family and how much we kind of um use and abuse our dining table i would say the only suitable top coat in the dixie bell range for a dining table is gator hide and that's because it's going to help protect with spillages anything else you're gonna struggle and that's because if obviously it's getting used a lot our dining table gets used a lot and the types of things that you're going to be putting on it um so a lot of the pieces that i paint are more decorative pieces hi lisa morning um more decorative pieces like this blanket box it's going to be used for storage and that's it it's not going to have people standing on it sitting on it well i hope not anyway fingers crossed but um a dining table it gets so much traffic so much traffic there's going to be spillages there's hot things placed on it there's water liquids all those kind of things also it gets wiped down a lot um so for that reason gator hide some of the other clear coats would be fine but gator hide is the toughest and most durable um you can apply three or four coats of satin or flat or um gloss clear coat but they they still won't offer the same level of durability as gator hide because that stuff's tough it's tough stuff um so yeah, dining tables, I tend not to do them because they are, they are, they do require that kind of, that level of durability. Um, I prefer doing more decorative pieces. But having said that, if you are doing anything where, I don't know, like a dressing table, um, where like cosmetic products or toiletries, um, I'm thinking, you know, like um, moisturisers and those kind of things. Again, you might want to think of gator hide just because it is the most durable and it's going to help protect against things that get spilt. I'm terrible. I, um, I, I, 
my intentions to be careful with things are there but we just no it's just not the one so each piece of furniture you're gonna you'll have to treat slightly differently would i advise using big mama's butter on a dining table probably not um with big mama's butter do you have to reply every so often um you can you can do you can reapply every so often so um it's got the uh, this is the one that i can't say conorba 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 wax which is actually one of the hardest waxes in the world so it has got that in it's not um it's not like it's gonna kind of go away but it, it it's wax so it does wear down um after continued use so again it depends on the piece of furniture how much you use it what it's going to be used for if you're using it over raw wood or carnuba oh is it carnuba oh okay i was i was overthinking it i was overthinking the pronunciation carnuba okay um it it depends it depends so if you are using bestang wax i know this is a different product i'm just using it as an example if you're using bestang wax to finish a product if you've used chalk mineral paint and you're using bestang wax to finish it off um i'm not going to say seal it because chalk mineral paint actually doesn't require sealing because it is very tough and very durable on its own but a lot of people do add a top coat or a wax or whatever so if you're using bestang wax to finish your project project and it's an occasional piece and it's not going to get much use versus something that does get a lot of use you're probably going to have to reapply the wax more than obviously if you're not going to use the piece a lot it does not make sense i haven't eaten much today and i've had too much caffeine so i'm a little bit gibbery um more so than usual and i also didn't sleep a lot last night for some reason um so <laughs> what i'm trying to say and what my brain is saying are not always the same thing um it depends there is no set answer um i'm trying to think of a i'm trying to think of an example okay here's one i have a piece of furniture on my landing that doesn't get used apart from to look pretty there's not a lot of stuff on it there's a house plant on it i think that's it it has best down wax on it I have never needed to reapply that best hand wax because it's perfect. I had a coffee table, which was actually a blanket box that I made into a coffee table. The top was sanded and I put best hand wax on it. I know, again, this is a different product, but the, the example is still relevant. I put best hand wax on it. And as with all coffee tables, it got abused, especially in my house. The kids, I think, probably did stamp on it um there was hot and cold drinks put on it there was food spilled on it there was a pizza box incident which, which i won't talk about um that was my other half andrew um there was a hot pizza box put on it so i did have to reapply the wax on that because it had way more traffic than the piece that's on my landing i really hope that example makes sense but it does it does differ depending on the piece and the surface that you're putting on it and the usage so one other thing to tell you about big mama's butter which i haven't i'm trying to make it as basic as possible but you lot keep asking me any other time he's andy andrew when he's in trouble it's his birthday today so we won't go into the details of what andrew did with the hot pizza box but um he wasn't popular for a while one more thing about big mama's butter i'm trying to keep it basic i'm trying to keep it simple <laughs> I'm going to go back to basics you lot keep asking me questions that are not basic you don't have to put it over the top of raw wood you can put it over the top of something that's already refinished uh in a in a different what am i trying to say it, something that's already got a, an, an existing factory finish on it are you following so this blanket box edge was sanded right back to Jackie. You are hopey baked his own cake. How rude! How rude! I can bake a cake, uh, but I'm not going to. He doesn't deserve one. Um, <laughs> he 
you distracting me? So this edge was sanded back to raw wood. And obviously the Big Mama's Butter has soaked into the wood grain. I've buffed the excess off. Jobs are good. And if you've got something like the inside of this blanket box, so this has got a varnish on. It's absolutely donkey's years old. The piece is vintage i don't even know how old the piece is but because obviously the inside of the blanket box has hardly had any use at all it's in good condition it's in really oh you're tilting forwards i put you in the big mama's butter then i just put the tripod inside the big mama's butter um so this is in really good condition there's no way i am sanding all this varnish off it is just not necessary at all it's in good condition, it's got a little bit of dust, but aside from that, it's absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with this at all. And it, again, it would be pointless for me to sand all of this varnish off to then put another finish on it. So what I do tend to do is, as long as it's all in good condition and there's no sort of chipped varnish or anything like that, I will go in, with my big mama's butter same brush i've got a loose hair there and uh, it's very dark in here isn't it and i do exactly the same but this just won't it's not going to soak into the wood like it did on this edge where it's raw wood it all it's going to do is it's just kind of revive the finish um you don't use as much product if you're putting it over something that's already varnished so a little bit will go a long way in this case and it's just going to revive it's just going to revive the finish and it gives it a really nice shine so that when my customer gets this and hopefully she'll be happy um when she does get the blanket box but she's going to look in here and instead of it being a little bit sort of it's not even dirty because I cleaned it when I prepped it. But instead of it being a little bit dull, it's just going to have a really nice shine and it's going to look in really good condition. So again, insides of drawers, you don't have to sand them back. You don't have to take the existing finish off. If you've got the, if you're taking off, if you're painting the body of something and you want to leave the top, but it's varnished and it's in good condition, you don't want to strip the top off. Just whack a bit of Big Mama's butter over it and rub, rub it up, up to a sheen and it's good to go. There's loads of different examples that I could think of that you could use it. You don't have to strip something back to bare wood to put Big Mama's butter on. You can use it over the top of existing, existing finishes. Um, so I hope that made sense. Um, 28 minutes of me rambling and there's still 24 people watching I would say that's pretty good going if you are watching on the replay and you've got this far well done um gold star to you because today I am I am rambling a little um but hopefully does big mama's butter soak into fabric yes it does it'll soak into anything um what are you going to be using the fabric for what what sort of I wouldn't advise painting uh using it over like sealing fabric that's probably a better job for easy peasy spray wax maybe but it will it does absorb it's a very like the blankets oh i see i see so you're worried about putting stuff inside when it's when i've treated it with was okay so this piece is not going to be collected probably at least for I'm trying to think of when it's going to be collected and delivered. But if there's something that's been treated recently with Big Mars Buy, always let the customer know. Also, what you need to do is remember to buff the excess. So obviously, I have just put a little bit of product on the inside of this chest. And then I'm going to take my shot cloth and rub it off until no more product comes on here. But what I will let the customer know is that it has been freshly waxed and just be careful if it's a commission if it's going home you know sort of fairly quickly i would probably advise to not use this for at least a week or two after you've put big mama's butter because like you say you could get a transfer of the oils in the product in the 
blankets or whatever you're storing or your clothing or whatever um <clears throat> but as long as you let your customer know if you are selling a piece if it's for your use i would just say keep rubbing until you've got all the excess off onto your rag and then just let it sit for at least a week um and that will obviously the product will cure and then there won't be any transfer of oils onto your onto your fabrics as long as you follow those steps so um is there anything else to tell you is there anything else to tell you about big mama's butter um oh thank you for the compliment on the old hair i've just had it cut but it is absolutely chucking it down today in the uk so i wore a hat i've wore a bright pink hat <laughs> which i've just bought um <clears throat> so hopefully hopefully that's back to basics on big mama's butter um next week i'll do another back to basics i don't know what that is yet I've got a week to come up with something that uh, I don't ramble on so much about. But if you do have anything, like a particular product that you want me to demonstrate and show you, then I'm more than happy to do that. Just drop them in the comments below. Um, it is a fun hat. Did I walk the dogs this morning in the rain? No, Jackie, I didn't. I've been walking about five miles a day um, for the past few months today's the first day that i haven't done it um because i had to go straight from dropping the kids off at the school to the hairdressers so i haven't but i will make it up tonight i will take them on a good one tonight with my bright pink hat um but if there's any so someone's already said easy peasy spray wax more than happy to demonstrate easy peasy spray wax i don't know if i'll be able to drag it out for a good 30, 31 minutes like this one uh because it is easy peasy <laughs> um but if there's any particular product that you want me to go back to basics on if you know the product or you've seen it floating around and you think i don't really know what that does more than happy to to give it a whirl on next week's live um so yeah and if you do have any any questions about what i've done today drop them in the comments below i will come back to the comments over the next couple of days or so Okay, another vote for no pain gel stain. I can add these so I can do one next week, one the week after. You still need to do something with Bayo Moss Voodoo Gel Stain. Yeah, I don't know what to do with that. It's got to be the right piece, hasn't it? But I'm more than happy to go back to basics on Voodoo Gel Stain. That's absolutely fine, not a problem. But make sure you drop them in the comments. Let me know what you'd like me to go over and I will absolutely do that, no problem. Um... And that's it. If you do get a couple of minutes, make sure you subscribe to the Dixie Bob YouTube channel. Check out all their other videos on here. They're amazing. And make sure you are subscribed to my YouTube channel as well. I've had a little break from posting on YouTube over the Christmas holidays, but I will be getting back to it. And that's it. Join me next week for another fun, eventful, live, hopefully no sneezing or dog barking YouTube live. And thank you for joining me. Have a lovely day. Bye.